Hi guys, it's Rob Marenke here. I hope you're doing very well. Uh, just so you know, this video is sent to you with peace in mind, okay? Um, and it's called Five Reasons Identity Politics is Insane and Dangerous. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we've got some good stuff coming your way. So, let's get a few things straight, a few definitions. If you, if you Google identity, it says, and I quote, the fact of being who or what a person or thing is. And the example they give is he knows the identity of the bombers. Oh, that's the one example. <laughs> the Cambridge Dictionary says identity is who a person is or the qualities of a person or group that make them different from others. Um, and the example they give is I cannot reveal the identity of my source. By the way, when a journalist says, uh, a source says, you know, that they're about to be fictitious or mendacious. <laughs> By the way, Pete Doherty was never forgiven that line in Tell the King from, Tell the King from their first album, that bracket, you're like a journalist, you can cut and paste and twist your awful. <laughs> so the definition of politics, if we're going to talk about identity politics, let's get these definitions right. The definition of politics on Google, okay, trust it, is the activities associated with the governance of a country or area, especially the debate between parties having power. An the example they give is, quote, the party quickly gained influence in French politics. Uh, Oxford Dictionary, the definition of politics is exactly the same word for word as the Google Dictionary. So, if you Google identity politics, uh, it says a tendency for people of a particular religion, race, social background, etc., to form exclusive political alliances, moving away from traditional-based party politics. Wikipedia says, Identity politics is a term coined by the Combahee River Collective in 1977. Don't worry, we'll get some more fun stuff in a minute, but it's, it's good to get these fact chunks in. <laughs> it's uh, a term coined by the Combahee River Collective in 1977. This is Wikipedia on what identity politics is. It refers to a political approach based on identifying the simultaneity, simultaneity, <laughs> simultaneity of experiences such as sexism, racism, uh, heterosexism, which apparently means homophobia, according to Google, and classism. Um, so, do those four things exist? Sexism, racism, heterosexism which is the same as homophobia and classism. Yes. <laughs> in all places, in all, in all directions, in all cultures, in all times, hopefully not throughout the universe, in above type zero civilizations, but um, there we go, you know? Um, and it's very unfortunate. So, I'm going to go through, <laughs> I'm gonna go through uh, five ways identity politics is insane and dangerous. So, Here's the first reason, I think, identifying with sexuality, gender, colour, class, um, and you made up, made up gender pronouns or whatever it is, the, them, these, uh, there are lots and lots of those and they're genuinely in law now, in Canada and other places. Um, and they expect everyone else to keep up with it, um, because they're bored and spoiled, I, I would imagine, um, and it's all, it's all a bit insane and dangerous. So, number one, identifying... The beautiful being that you are is just gay. That's the primary category that some people give themselves. That's it, I'm gay. Making the basis of your political identity. <laughs> Making that the basis of your political identity. It's not only mistaken, but it's dangerous for the following reasons. Uh, there's a strong, and I assume intimidating, implication for gay people. I'm not going to say the gay community. That's a ridiculous thing. Gay people. Um, at the core of that belief that every breathing gay person must feel the same way when it comes to how big the government should be or what VAT should be or tax, different kinds of taxation, um, investment in schools. Um, it's a perfect storm for conflict. It incentivizes conflict. Uh, identity politics, identifying with, in this case, um, sexuality. Um, and Peter, I should have checked his surname, I think he found a Stonewall, the best gay 
brilliant gay charity going back decades um, is now blind not gay enough because he, he wouldn't fall in line with certain mouth, mouth things, certain things, and wouldn't be a mouthpiece for, for ridiculous things that are being propagated by the uh, certain insane excesses of the gay rights community movement community. Um, male sheep have long-term homosexual relationships. Um, <laughs> uh, there's roughly a 10% frequency of, of homosexuality in nature. Um, you don't see sheep using their sexuality in, in, a, in a very su superficial way to define themselves um, ahead of, say, the universe in their eyes, which is how we all should be going, <laughs> going about things. Okay, number two is gender. So I'm a man and I have a Y and X chromosome, right? I'm actually biologically speaking half that of a woman who has two X chromosomes. And actually I should be doing, doing, really doing a video on the matriarchy of nature. Um, <laughs> who will wipe away the house of anyone with a, uh, with a, with a blow, with a breath or a wave. <laughs> okay. So if I choose to use man instead of person or human, I am by implication being exclusive, by strong implication, setting myself apart from all women, uh, all trans people, while simultaneously claiming coalition with all 3.5 billion men and claiming they're on my side politically and culturally. Uh, how could that not lead to deep subterranean cultural and psychological conflict? You know? I really hope my video, my phone has the memory for this. Uh, so, number three, your colour. First thing on this, how many white people do you know? Like paper white. <laughs> uh, only pe people like that, they can't be in sunlight, they have to live in living rooms and they've got bright red eye that eyes that they have to cover up with big thick dark sunglasses, okay? So that's white people. I'll be, I'll be in it, I'll bite nerves. Uh, second thing, how many black people do you know? Like coal black. Jet black, as black as space, really. Um, if I say I identify as a white person, it sounds insane, which it should, okay? <laughs> uh, if I were a, a Chinese person and said I identify as a, a yellow person or whatever the, whatever the crude colour definition would be, it would sound insane. If I was a, of African heritage, um, I know we're all evolutionary speaking, in an evolutionary sense, from Africa, descended from Africa, but uh, if, I identify, if I said I identify as a black person, that's just sound insane as well, um, whatever colour you are. Wouldn't it, again, sound exclusive? It, it excludes anyone who isn't the particular colour you're claiming solidarity with or claiming, use it, using it as an excuse to do whatever. Um, you know, people enjoy riveting on to people in a, in a fascistic manner all the while hiding behind the banner of uh, expansive compassion, you know. Um, and they should be ashamed of themselves. <laughs> and all the while hiding behind this banner. Again, I'm not saying it isn't, won't be, hasn't been racism for time memorial. Unfortunately, everywhere. Uh, still is. Although it's, I think it's better than it used to be. You know, that's what I think. Uh, it's, it's, it's been in all cultures and all places. And, and we can take a bold step forward, you know, we can take a bold step forward and put this nonsense of seeing each other as different colours behind and just be colour blind. Um, apparently Johnny Bremer from Radiohead is lucky enough to be colour blind. In exposing this dangerous nonsense that a noisy minority propagate in the most childish and violent way because they enjoy taking a good cause and having a tear up or a fight in the streets of LA or New York or London or Bristol. So number four, your class. So I've been trying to make the point that there's a class war going on, not a race war, which comes from identifying with class, just as racial conflict partly comes from a very deep urge and temptation to identify with race. But truly, it partly comes from that. Racial conflict partly comes from a very deep urge and temptation to identify with race, I think. Uh, but truly, in material um, economic terms, uh, <laughs> There are the haves and the have-nots, you know? And unless you have wealth with roots deeper than a fucking giant oak tree, uh, Jack's giant beanstalk, you're a have-not with no magic beans, okay? Um, but again, don't identify with that. Identify with humanity, light, existence, your breath, the universe in, in your eyes and uh, other people's eyes. So number 
five. The proof is in the pudding, okay? Have you seen one second of footage of the people in the street recently uh, with baseball bats taking their superficial identity far too seriously in the name of identity politics, um, doing fascist fascistic things, violent, thuggish things, bullying things, horrible things, it's people of all colours and ages and creeds, or pretending and pretending <laughs> to be doing it, hiding behind a legitimate grievance um, as an excuse to, to just punch anyone in the face and put them in hospital. Could be you, could be your son, could be your friend, could be your cousins, could be your, someone you don't even like. It's still not going to be good. Uh, have you read a page of a history book where this sort of stuff leads? I'm not going to go into the all the examples now, but I've done some other videos there. Um, it's 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 mentally unhealthy. Okay, all this stuff is po it's poisonous. So my advice would be, again, identify with your breath. You know, uh, or your being. That's it. Your humanity. Every your well your part of the universe. That's true on a molecular level. It's true on a on a metaphysical level. Um, you know, if you do the most basic research, it doesn't like lead to situations conducive to mental <laughs> to mental health. This stuff, you know. Um, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a scribbler. I'm a scribbler. You have to give me one second. I don't know what Levitt says. Okay, so I'm going to go into, in the spirit of friendship, okay, in the spirit of friendship, of love, of peace, like I was saying, I offer this video and previous things I've said. Or well, some of you may disagree with my style, but it's, it's started a conversation. I didn't mean it to, but I want to unite us all peacefully, not fighting in the street while a few sinister billionaires chuckle and, uh, and make a fortune off sickness and, and war, because both those things are lucrative. So stay strong, guys, stay individual. You know, uh, look forward, not back, and ask yourself this question. Where do you draw the line with identity politics? He's got a detached house, mine's semi-detached. Uh, I'm going to identify as someone with a semi-detached house. And if, you know, if you don't respect that, and I remember, remember to mention that, I'm going to be offended. You know, she plays tennis, but I play squash. Uh, don't don't mention tennis around me, I'll, get, I'll be triggered. <laughs> To me, all this obsessing over appearance is, is not healthy mentally at all, by definition. Because it's no, it's all surface, no feeling. Um, it's, it's no healthy way to live, particularly for homo sapiens, uh, for, for human beings. And it's rooted in totally mis misguided jealousy, envy, and unfortunately, as we've all seen recently, uh, talking June 2020, criminally violent behaviour on the aforementioned streets and many other places. Um, so identity politics is like the Facebook newsfeed. The threads of introduction may look tempting. They look so tempting. But they always lead to a web. Bye-bye, guys. Stay strong.